previously. Well, Gage, congratulations on the first ever Yada Lock on Progression Series Season 2. I re-rolled my packs. I got shit on. Oh my <laughs> god. Dude, next to last pack, you want to know what I pulled? I flipped over my cards, and what do I see in the super duo. rare slot? Duo. Next to me? Duo. Delinquent <laughs> duo. Oh, yes. I yes. was so upset. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. But this time around, we'll be introducing side sets, a new banning system, and plenty of other fun surprises that you'll just have to watch to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series Season 2. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code CMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Well, I wasn't expecting to be back in the banning this soon, ladies and gentlemen, but I guess here we are. It's, I feel like my decks have actually been okay. I think just I need to play better in all honesty. I look back at that last episode, could have done some things better. I definitely think I could have played it better, but it is what it is. We're here in the banning and there is one card that is definitely on my radar. A couple of considerations, change of heart and Yada Garasu. I mean, I did lose to Yada Lock last episode, but honestly, I just want to ban Raigeki again. Gage is so comfy behind Raigeki that let's just get rid of it for the second time in season two. I just don't want to deal with it. And that means I have board wipes and Gage doesn't. So let's get rid of it. Raigeki's gone. Let's go ahead and have Gage spin his winner's wheel and see what broken nonsense he's going to get this time. Take a look at this ad right here. This is exactly where Alex is going to be sitting after I put him in his place this week. Again, three win streak, baby. Alex can ban whatever card he likes. I don't even care. We are absolutely slaughtering him and I get to spin quite possibly the biggest wheel of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series to date. The Dark Beginning Wheel, it's the same wheel as it's always been. However, these wild cards carry a lot more weight as they contain cards from the entire era of Yu-Gi-Oh! we just played. So I pretty much have any card at my fingertips right now. It's very exciting. I don't want to waste too much time, man. Give it a big old spin there. Give me something hot. Even a rare is crazy because because it's something like Forceful Sentry that neither of us have. But a super is even better! Okay, let's take a Gandra what we can grab. All right, so looking at this Gargantuan set list, I think I've actually been able to narrow it down to like three cards that I want to pick up, maybe two, three. I'm looking at Dark Hole, which happens to be a super rare, which I don't have a copy and I don't think Alex does either. I'm looking for more fair cards that uh, he wouldn't just instantly ban as soon as I pick him up. Nobleman of Crossout has been something neither of us been able to play with, so that's something cool that I thought maybe grabbing would be cool. It might be too little too late though. I no, I know Alex is still setting monsters, but um, I don't know. Maybe it just might not be the move. Oh, and the last card here, uh, Call of the Haunted. This is the one thing I was looking at. I did get a Makiura this episode. However, I don't think Makiura is going to be doing too many crazy things. If I do pick up Call of the Haunted, I do think I have the OTK where I can go Call of the Haunted battle phase, bring back Chick, and just keep bouncing it over and over again. I don't know. Could be kind of cute. This is also something, like I said, that wouldn't instantly, you know, grab a ban as soon as I pick it up. I do know what Alex chose to ban this episode, though. He chose to get rid of my only copy of Raigeki yet again. So how about I give myself a replacement, you know? Let's play with Dark Hole this episode. I'll put it in the collection. So I'll let Alex tell you about the next set we have today, and that's Rise of Destiny. Good thing we banned Raigeki, huh? I feel like Gage probably just pulled something infinitely more broken off of the wheel that we're going to have to contend with for this episode, but we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, Rise of Destiny was released on December 1st, 2004, and Rise of Destiny, like many of the other 60 card sets, definitely leaves a lot to be desired. We obviously get some more level monsters. The creator was actually uh, the standout background image of this set, and uh, a very neat card, but just so limited limited because of the fact there were so many restrictions piled on this, mainly the fact you couldn't special summon it from the graveyard, really hampered this card from seeing much play. The Silent Swordsman debut in this set, one of my favorite archetypes, for no particular reason, I just think the artwork is badass, and Nightmare Penguin's a nice control tool, just basically more copies of Gravekeeper's Guard. This set did have a focus on elemental synergies, uh, we also had some Harpy support in here as well, Thestalos, the next in line of the Monarchs are in here, we didn't pull Mobius, Thestalos probably isn't good enough to make the cut at this point, but being able to rip cards out of Gage's hand, especially when he has stuff like 
like Yada and Chaos Emperor Dragon, definitely something to consider. And then probably one of the best, if not the single best card in Rise of Destiny, Dekoichi the Battle Chanted Locomotive. This card is everything you could want in a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It draws you a card on flip. Its stats are very generous considering it draws you a card at 1400 attack. It's also dark, which means it synergizes with Chaos. This card is great. I love Dekoichi, and I know Gage does too. Aside from that, there really isn't much else. I mean, Machine Duplication was released in this set, but that doesn't get good until much later. Monster Reincarnation, you know, Divine Wrath. These are very situational cards, so I don't think there's really much else to say. I mean, that's what the sets were like around this time, honestly, but it is what it is. Now, we are going to open our pity pack, and we are taking a lot of your guys' feedback, so we decided since the new wheel for the winner is OP as fuck, we're going to give the loser three pity packs instead of one to sort of equalize things a little bit, right? Obviously, the wheel's still broken, but at least this doesn't feel as bad as just getting a single pack. We probably should have made this change earlier, and this gives me an idea for something we might do in the future. So let's go ahead and flip up our packs. We're finally on tournament pack five after like 10 episodes because that set was released for like a year. Flip them up. Uh, wow. Luminous Soldier Ultra Rare. That is like the worst card we could have pulled. All right. Well, I'm glad we got three of these packs. Hopefully we can get something useful. Nope. I guess another Tornado Bird isn't terrible, but I think we're probably past the point of Tornado Bird being useful. Final pack. Let's see what we get. Wow. That is, uh... Not great. I guess these cards are like okay for fusions, but I don't even think we're desperate enough to play those ever. So it is what it is. Tournament pack five was a bit of a dud, but you know, so you can't win them all. Let's go ahead and crack open 24 packs of Rise of Destiny. All right, RDS, let's see what we can pick up from it. Uh, I don't know if there's anything too big I'm looking for from this set. Honestly, uh, I'd like to get a Festalos. He'd be pretty tough. But, uh, we'll see what we grab, okay? Oh, I got a super rare. B.E.S. Big Core, man. Big Core. It's some big butt. I will not be playing it. An ultra rare. Mystic Swordsman. Level 6. It is nothing too good to talk about, man. Really ain't gonna be playing this guy. Fusor Dragon becomes a little bit later. I think it comes good with, uh, Pendulums. Or, uh, because it's just a guy you can draw from your hand. Or you can normal summon him, too. That's, like, part of it. Tragedy. <laughs> just like this whole set, man. I haven't got a single good thing so far. And this is not one of them. Wow, that's bad. 24 packs of Rise of Destiny coming right up and our first pack actually has a very funny card homunculus the alchemic being is a card that typically i would never bat an eye at but i think this card power creeps x head cannon by exactly 100 attack the question is do we betray our x head cannon for it we'll have to see all right pack number two i'm liking this dekoichi the battle chanted locomotive if we can get a play set of dekoichi i will be thrilled okay this is interesting so mirage dragon is actually a neat little card so it's a light monster which is relevant because obviously Obviously, the lights are still weak in terms of chaos strategies, but your opponent cannot activate trap cards during the battle phase. So Mirage Dragon's stats with how Gage's deck is shaping up are actually pretty decent for the type of deck I'm trying to build, and this would completely nullify cards such as Sakuretsu Armor, which we know Gage is playing. And so this may be something to consider if I want to just hedge my deck more towards chaos and also have the ability to just completely stop Saku. Well, there's another Mirage Dragon if we want to go down that route, and an ultra rare, perfect Machine King. God, I loved this card card as a kid. We're not going to be playing it in any sort of capacity, but damn, this card is so sick. Back to square one is interesting. It's like wind blast in a spell card, uh, but unfortunately you can only pick monsters, which is what also makes it pretty terrible. Uh, wind blast is just better, but we don't get that till flaming eternity. Oh, and there's a Festalos. The question is, do I actually even want to play this card? Like, yeah, ripping a card out of Gage's hand is pretty good, I guess, but I mean, it's not like Zaborg or Mobius good, but Festalos is still a beast. I'm happy to see it. Yeah, that's about what I expected out of the set. Uh, an ultimate rare, ultimate insect level three. Try saying that five times fast. Uh, definitely not playing it, but uh, very funny to see nonetheless. Fusilier Dragon, the dual mode beast is, I guess, worth talking about because I do have two copies of Skill Drain and we could actually buff Fusilier up to 2800. We also have the ability due to Premature Burial and Call of the Haunted to resurrect this as a 2800 as well. It's also a dark, so it has chaos synergy. Festalos, there it is, the big guy himself here. Missed out on Mobius the last time, but I will take a Festalos. This guy's gonna be ripping shit from Alex's hand. Expect to play him. Man, I love these monarchs, dude. Some of my favorite monsters in the game. An ultimate rare necklace of command. Oh my god. Yep, not much to say about that. Going on the last few packs here, man. I was gonna make a comment about my one of my favorite cards in the game, Dekoichi. I've yet to flip one up. I really would like to play with Dekoichi, but I don't think I'm gonna be having any. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a card that Alex is chasing after too. Triangle Ecstasy Spark, man. Terrible. Last two packs. Anything big in the close here? Anything? 
Nope. Seems like a standard Rise of Destiny opening. I didn't get any Dekoichi. I got a whole bunch of his, uh, what is this, Bakoichi, I think it is? Yeah, Bakoichi. I got a whole bunch of his brother here. Not himself. So I guess we're not going to be uh, drawing any cards with Dekoichi, but I'm okay with that. I refuse to be able to mulligan this set. So let's plug him in the collection. Let's get building. There he is, the man himself, the creator. God, I wish this card was better. Why can't you special summon him from the graveyard? This card would have been insane if you could have done that, but it is what it is. Uh, it's just going to be going to the collection, but it's still a really nostalgic card for me. Okay, well, there's actually a good hollow. Um, Divine Wrath is actually pretty decent. The problem is we have to pitch a card and we have to actually have an effect that's worth negating, but there's a few things. I don't know if I'm actually going to play this, but it's something to consider. Okay, so I skipped over it because it wasn't really relevant, but I just pulled three machine duplications back to back to back and that will be very good later on if we ever get any set that can take advantage of this i remember gage played desk bots with three machine dupe or maybe two machine dupe in season one and so having this in the bank for later isn't terrible all right, you guys, only a few packs left. I would like to nab one more Dekoichi at the very least. So let's see if we can make that happen. I just got four machine duplications in a row. Are you serious? I don't need more machine duplications. Come on, Dekoichi, Dekoichi. Oh, 60 card sets. How I love thee. Please, last pack. Oh my God. I think I have like six covering fires too. Wow. All right. Well, one Dekoichi, one Thestalos, and everything else is pretty much worthless, but that's Rise of Destiny for you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, the memories. All right. Well, we got some deck building to do, so let's get into it. We've been clobbering Alex a little bit too much with our Chaos deck, and I figured I needed to take a step back and try something new to throw him off his game. He was already metagaming himself, thinking I was going to think differently, so why would this be the episode that I switch things up? So I have a feeling he's going to stick with his stupid recruiter deck that has not been giving him any luck and I'm going to completely throw him off his base and play a whole bunch of cards that just aren't going to let him play the game. Behold, I bring back one of the earlier curb stompers in the form of Clown Control, just a little bit updated. There's a couple cards, dude, that I'm so surprised that I genuinely missed. Fucking stumbling? Take a look at this card, chat. Hold on, take a look. This is a card that's played in three in all these lists, dude. Any monster that is normal, flipped, or special is changed into defense position, so it would trigger these clowns. I pulled zero of them. This card's a common. A little bit upsetting, I will admit, but I decided to replace it with like one earthquake, but I did get four level limit area B, which I think is also a huge card. Pretty much a gravity bind in a spell form. I have a feeling Alex is just going to stick with a whole bunch of his level four floaters, like the tomatoes and stuff like that. I just have a feeling Alex is going to stick with his stupid recruiter deck that is giving him no luck. So cards like gravity bind level limit will just be able to shut him out of the game. We'll be able to manage his board with clowns and then um, gain card advantage with Deslacuda. Wincon is a mix of stealth bird and wave motion cannon. The only thing is, as I know, Alex got a lot of dust tornadoes with dark beginning one earlier. So it's a little bit terrifying to think with his copy of true Nate as well as those, how long these will stick around. However, I think I'm playing more than enough floodgates and stuff that demand answers that at least I'll be able to keep my really good cards in the back row to shut out the game. If I can manage the board or at least lock down the game for one or two turns, if I can get one clown resolution, I'm pretty sure it's just a wrap. Not to mention if we do get the game under control, Yada Garas, who can get under level limit as well as gravity bind, so one simple peck from this fella here will shut Alex out of the game almost immediately. Side deck's just a, uh, a mix of everything. Kaiku to deal with uh, the chaos matchup if Alex decides to still play CED. Just some generic goodies like uh, Warrior Lady and Night Assailant. The My Bodies are still there because they're amazing. Prohibit I, I'm confident this will come up one time. Bog Spirit stays back there too. It's just, I think, a little bit less potent than the rest of the uh, floodgates that we have. And then the Mind Crush is actually pretty kind of cool when we pair it with Crass Clown. Anything we bounce back, we can just ditch it out of Alex's hand. And then Magic Drain, Um, I don't think I'll be siding in Magic Drain. I'm just going to be honest with you. Right, I don't think this deck's too bad, man. It's worth a shot here. We're on a win streak. What do I got to lose, right? Let's see what Alex is playing. Okay, so Shocker, Rise of Destiny didn't exactly change that much for Progression Series. And so we sort of reconfigured the deck a bit. I'm actually playing more of a Chaos Beatdown variant than I was before. Last time I had more of an earth emphasis. I want to switch things up a bit. So let's quickly do the card by card. We have two Berserk Gorilla. Again, this is in here, even though it's on a chaos monster, because it can hit over like everything Gage has in his entire deck, aside from like what he has to tribute or special summon by banishing stuff. And so it's an annoying threat that he does have to deal with, especially good for me because I need to take care of his Kaiku. I have a Chaos Emperor and a Chaos Sork because we're playing like six lights and eight darks or something like that, if you don't count these two. And so I want to have a couple of bombs that I can top deck and just drop down that are going to be difficult for him to deal with. DD Warrior Lady Exiled Force, double homunculus the alchemic being. So the 100 extra defense sort of matters because it can actually withstand a sacred crane in defense where X head cannon cannot. And Gage is Tsukiyomi, so that could actually come up. But I need this just
just because I need decent lights. And the thing is, I have Thunder Nyan Nyan, but like that is just a terrible card. I think this is a hundred less attack, but the fact that it doesn't just blow itself up if you don't control a non-light, it's probably worth it. And uh, this is like the next best light besides like the DD Warrior Lady and like the Shining Angels. Obviously Sasuke would be more ideal, but this is what we got. Then we have two Mystic Tomato, two Shining Angel in the Recruiter Department. I actually pulled a second one of these in Dark Beginning, which is nice. I had one initially from Magic Ruler and having these in here allow us just to get to our fodder for our chaos a lot quicker. Tomato can float into Sangen and get us into like a Shining Angel or Warrior Lady. So that gives us chaos all by itself. And these monsters are likely to A, stick on the field or at least keep a monster on the field. But B, if we get in a situation where we're top decking, like with Chaos Emperor, we're going to be able to, if we get one of these, constantly float into another monster, which is crucial. Sasuke Sangen, Skill Dark Magician, Spirit Reaper, and Double Archfiend Soldier. Again, we're playing Chaos Beatdown and my monsters are much larger than Gage's. So in theory, he should have to waste more of his cards to deal with my cards like Archfiend Soldier and the like. And so that's why we're playing some of these cards, even though they're like technically vanillas in the instance of Soldier and Homunculus. Then for the spells, uh, I have Cold Wave in here finally. I don't know what took me so long to play this. I think now that I've decided that I'm playing the more beatdown oriented deck, especially with Gage setting like all of his back row as well, uh, Cold Wave is just a great way that we can actually ensure that we can get in for a ton of damage because if we win the game, it doesn't matter how many cards he has. And so this is sort of like another giant true nade in a way. And I think I've been neglecting this for quite some time. We have Comfy, Double Fisher, Triple My Body as a shield. I want to make sure that our big guys stick and they're difficult for Gage to deal with. Pot of Greed, Premature, Rhoda, and Smashing Ground. And then for the traps, Double Bottomless, Call the Haunted, Compulse, Double Dust Tornado, Imperial Order, Ring of Destruction, Sakuretsu Armor, and Torrential Tribute. The side deck's just full of a bunch of stuff that we could potentially side into depending on the circumstance. We have another Chaos Sork. The Chaos Monsters can sometimes just be very bricky, and so I didn't want to commit to a second one of these. Even thinking like formats where you do see the Chaos Monsters being played, like Goat and the like, they only play like one of this. And that's probably why, because you really don't want to see more than that. Obviously you have BLS too, but I don't really want to go into a second one, but it's here if I need it. I have the one good card from Rise of Destiny, Dekoichi. Doesn't really feel like Dekoichi fits my deck. I mean, it does get me a draw and it's 1400, but I just feel like the recruiters are a little bit better, but I have it in here on the side just in case. Fairy Lily is another beatdown card in case I want to bring this in. Jinzo is very strange. I feel like I want to play this card, but it turns off my traps, which is bad. Gage is only playing like six-ish traps and like two of them are probably dust tornadoes. So like, I don't even think that's that good. And this card is a terrible top deck. If we get in like a Chaos Emperor Dragon situation and we draw Jinzo, that's like the worst card we can draw. So I actually don't really want to see this all that much. So it's in the side. Swordsman's in here in case Gage is playing a more defensive focus deck. We have another Fisher, double extermination as like pseudo copies of MST. Double Regeki break if we need more back removal. Double skill drain if we want to bring these back in. These kind of felt like bricks in the last build. So I kind of want to just have these in the side for now. And triple trap dust shoot. I have this in the side. So when I know I'm going first, I'm going to bring this in so we can try to dismantle Gage's hand. So guys, I think we can pull out a win. I think it's finally time we turn the tables. We get back in control of the wheel. Rise of Destiny isn't like the best set to get the wheel on, but the wheel's broken, so it doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Gage, how the fuck am I back in the banning again? So soon! I just don't get it! Oh my hey, god. Man, I, but... The more you hit into the banning, the more I realize I just have way better cards than you do, do. So you can keep taking them out I of my guess. collection. I'm okay. I guess. <laughs> I mean, Regeki's gone again. I guess that's another first in progression series history that I've had to ban a card twice. But I'm I'm happy knowing, like, especially last game, I think you Regeki'd me twice and it mattered. Uh, it, it definitely made the difference in that match. I, I'd imagine sure. it would have, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Regeki is Regeki, and I just don't want to deal with it. Yada, eh, I mean, if I get Yada locked again, I'll eat my own words, but it is what it is. Rise of Destiny, though, really not much to say. I mean, these 60 card sets are just really shitty, unfortunately. They there's a, feel there's small. a few gems. They feel small, bro. Like, they, yeah. you just look at it, you're opening it, you're like, where's all the good stuff? And then you realize there's like one good card in the set. <laughs> so you're like, man, I didn't get it. I think the most infuriating part is when you open like six or seven of the same rare, and it's oh not God. the rare you actually <laughs> wanted it to be, and you're yeah. like, why? Why? We'll talk about that after, of course. I don't think there's anything earth shaking in that set. Uh, I mean, there's a couple cards that we could be seeing this episode, but nothing like that's going to force a whole new deck around it. But I'm ready to get into it, buddy. Let's shout the patron. It's Gage. Please put the fucking pot of greed back in your deck. They've been <laughs> in there. They've been in there, man. Cut me some slack. Jeez. That's probably a delayed patron name, <laughs> but you know what? I think it's still pretty funny. So, all right, buddy. Ooh. Hey. Okay. 
Okay, cool. Ah, damn. You got it. I was just rolling dice, like always. The die has been failing me lately. But... I know. It hasn't been doing too good. All right, bud. I'm going to switch it up, man. I've been saying this, the, the second card, man, it's too good, but I'm going to go first this time, okay? Interesting. Okay. If you're curious to see why you're changing it up, good luck, buddy. Good luck, my friend. I'll go stand by phase, main phase. All right. Well, let's see how this goes, okay? I'm going to normal summon a new fella here. I'm going to normal okay. summon Dream Clown. You bringing back the clowns, buddy. Good old friend, man. I'm going to set one, two. Your move, bud. You're really bringing back the clowns. This is... Okay, sure. I'll draw. You got anything in standby for me? Nothing in standby. Okay, main one. So this is interesting. You're really bringing this deck back. What the hell are you up? Now you, you wanna, have me thinking. You want to summon a dude? You want to you wanna try to compete with him? So I want to summon a dude, but the problem is I know you probably have something that's going to stop me with me summoning a dude. So I need to think about how exactly I want to do this. Let's go ahead and run out Exiled Force. Okay, Exiled Force is fine. Try to kill the Dream Clown. Yeah, that'll actually take care of him. Okay, well, that was an easy way to do it. Uh, I'll just set a few then of my own, and uh, we'll throw it to you. All right, I'll draw. Standby phase, main phase. Well, I mean, at least I got the Exiled Force out of the way. It wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the out I intended, but it's the <laughs> one I deserve, I guess. I'll summon Giant Rat. Sure. And then I'll go battle phase for 14. Yeah, 14's fine. All right, my man. You're moved. Okay, draw. Stand by anything? Nope. Okay, main one. Let's smash the rat. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you, you got the answers. I got the removal, buddy. I got the removal. Tomato. Yep. Hit for 14. Yep. And that's it for me. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw. Look at this fair Yu-Gi-Oh! I know, play. right? <laughs> Stand by main. All right, man. I want your tomato. I'm going to make some sauce out of it. Ooh. Why would you do that to my tomato? Uh, this is fine you can have them all right cool uh i did get i think which is one of the best sets uh, cards from rds here i'm gonna tribute off your mystic tomato Thestalos. And, yeah for the fiery sauce man himself here Thestalos, okay. baby sure. so i pick out one of these cards here let me snipe that one that's a pretty good one it's giant true nade actually uh, oh wait that's actually like best case scenario no damage to yeah. you but that's okay man now do i attack because i don't you can't get around this big guy he's fucking big yeah we'll go battle phase 24 let's ring him uh, okay, we'll take 24. We're both taking 24. Okay, um, Vestal is to Graveyard. I'll go main two. It's Flood. Level limit, area B. Okay, sure. I'll draw. I will set one, and you're on one card over there? Hmm. Actually, you're on no cards over there, just your uh, level limit. Yeah, I guess I'll just pass then. Okay, cool. I will draw. Stand by me. So weird, uh, you're playing like clown control and like monarch and I, like- I'll explain it later, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let, me, let me just win my game here, how about that? I'll set a card and I'll just pass. Okay, I'll draw. Uh, main one, what are you up to? Dust the level limit. Okay, would you like to set a card from hand? I would not, thank okay. you for asking though. I, it is part I got of the you, effect. I got you. <laughs> I, thank you, thank you. Let's run out Homunculus the Alchemic Bee. What the fuck? I, he, is he just big? I mean... He has a hundred more defense points than uh, X-Head Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was like, you're still playing just these dudes that are big. <laughs> and he's a light. Get that, bro. He is a light. Crazy. Exactly. Exactly. He's strictly okay. an upgrade. He also has like an effect that could maybe be relevant one day, but not today. Uh, that's all for me. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw. Stand by yep, me. Sure. All right, I'll flip up Witch, and then I'll go battle for 11. Take the 11. Cool. Main two, I will just, uh, I'll just pass. Okay, I'll draw. Let's run out Archfiend Soldier. Another big guy. <laughs> Another big guy. Okay. Got the big dudes. Try to hit the witch. I'll take eight, and then I'll witch search. Sure. Oh, my. You could lose this game. I don't know what you have in your hand. That's the thing, is you just have another dude, and I'm going to just eat my own ass here, bro. It's <laughs> um, There's a clip for you, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to grab Yadagarasu. I had a feeling you might go for that. Okay. Okay, so second main. So now the biggest fear is you could just have removal plus Yada, potentially. Yikes. What do we do about that? I think I actually just pass. Okay, I uh, will draw. Stand by me. I have the removal part of it. Do you have an answer to it? When did you get Dark Hole? Right. Oh, I get to tell oh, you. I got it from the wheel today. You asshole. <laughs> oh, 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 God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have it. I got it from the wheel today, man. Yeah. I think you take my red geki. I'll replace it with something else. Fair right, enough. Tell me that's not a monster. Uh, in your hand. It's torrential for your oh, fucking oh, Yada. I mean, you got it at least. That'll I, got your, I got my own mass removal. <laughs> Thankfully, mine's reactive. All right, go ahead. Your turn. Okay, thank God for that. Sasuke. 
Yep. <laughs> AT. <laughs> yep. Uh, go ahead. I'll draw. Oh, this is exactly what I didn't want to happen. <laughs> when did you get dark hole? <laughs> <laughs> I'll Perfect just reaction. A card and I'll end. Go ahead. So did you draw, I'm sorry, did you spin like the, because it was for dark beginning, right? Yeah. So it was the super rare wild card then? Yep, that was the okay. one. All right. I mean, that's fair. It gets you another mass board wipe, which is still pretty good. Uh, at least it's possibly not one-sided. Main one. Uh, okay. I don't care what your set is. Bring out skill, Dark Magician. <sighs> yeah. It. Uh, I, I, I understand the sentiment. You got it. <sighs> okay. All right. Woo! We beat Yada, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Alex, even with my clown control, bro, I'm clowning on you. That was a close game, dude. So uh, I mean, <laughs> I guess. I Hitting that true nade out of my hand actually mattered quite a bit with the L-Lab, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I was hoping that would stick around a little bit longer. But I did mention in the deck profile, I was like, you did get a couple of dust tornadoes and everything yeah. in uh, Dark Beginning. So you're not quite in the position where I can just say, oh, I'll play whatever floodgate I want. You can't answer it. So uh, it looks like we got some Yu-Gi-Oh on our hands here. So we'll, we'll see how game two goes. I think yeah. I'm also, I'm just going to elect to go first again, bro. Okay. Okay, I open sure. a more floods. I'm interested to hear what your plan was behind this deck. So can't wait to see it. Good luck, buddy. All right, I'll go stand by main. I will set one, two, and move out. I'll draw. Main one, let's run out homunculus. Uh, I will bottomless the homunculus. My body. You're just, okay, all right. I'm not going to get that. Hit for 18. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just trying to hit fast and hard before you get these floodgates up, buddy. Second main, I'll set a pair and throw it to you. Okay. I will draw. Stand by me. All right. Well, I guess this is perfect. I will uh, activate level limit. Well, uh, there you go. He's going to defense. Summon Dream Clown. The summon of Dream Clown is fine. Yeah, I figured to be successful. I'll pass. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I will draw. Anything in standby. Nope. Main one. Let's write Geki break the L lab. <sighs> yep. Put homunculus to attack. Let's try to get in. Uh, I'll write Geki break the homunculus. Ooh, we're getting down to low resources here, buddy. <laughs> it's not okay. a good spot for me, bro, honestly. It's really for you, oh, for sure. Yeah, this is like exactly what I want to, the situation I want to be in. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. okay, so he's gone. You got rid of your dark hole for that, too. That's pretty nice. Uh, I've got a back row. Go ahead. Okay, I'll draw. Stand by me. Uh, I'll just go battle. 12. That's fine. Okay. Main two, I will set and pass. Go ahead. Okay. I'll draw. Uh, what do we want to do? Let's try to preem back the homunculus. That's fine. Let's try to hit your clown. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, bad. Second main, I have a, another back row. Go ahead. Okay, I'll draw. Go. Ooh, this might be a quick one. Bring out Sangen. Oh, he's like the perfect out for this too. Oh, okay, that's fine. Battle, thousand. I'm gonna take them both. Okay, that is exact lethal we have you on. Go ahead. Draw, stand by main. I'll activate, that doesn't do anything. No, oh my God, I will set, set, go. Okay, draw. Uh, battle homunculus. Yeah, it's Sangin. Okay. I really don't know how I'm gonna get myself out of this, bro. This was not a good choice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you were just clowning around too yeah, much over there. Yeah, right. Um, all right, uh, I'll pick up a second one of the fellas here. I'll pick up a drink clown. Sure. Try and hit for a thousand. Yeah, I'll take the a thousand. Ring homunculus for good. Ah! Man, I thought at least I'd have a turn. No, that's that's it. Yeah, you got it. Okay. All man. right. Well, good games, buddy. Good Tell game. me what you were you were cooking so, up over here. You, man, I had a theory with this. I was like, I'm going to bring back the cloud control because I figured so many sets later, there's a couple small cards that actually end up being good, you know? One from okay. Ancient Sanctuary was Earthquake. I was like, maybe I can do something with this. And the other one, Alex, is from Invasion of Chaos. Do you know what the card is? Uh, Zero Gravity. Well, that's, that that's, that's a cool one, but I was thinking Stumbling. Oh, I stumbling. Okay. Alex, do you want to hear how many stumbling a common card from Invasion of Chaos I pulled? I'm going to go with zero. I didn't pull a single damn one, man. <laughs> I, was like, I was like so ready to build it. I was putting it together. And then I looked up a clown control list. And I was like, I, I thought Earthquake was the card I was missing originally. And I realized okay. it was stumbling and I didn't have any. So I was like, oh my God, well, I'm already committed to it. So <laughs> I just buffed out the rest of the deck to see if it would work. I figured, you know, you would probably be on your stupid recruiter or whatever list you've been on to recently, which is, I guess, is similar to what it was. But um, that's why I played like level limit and gravity bind. I didn't see gravity bind. 
But uh, thankfully, yeah. No, I I I was figured maybe like the end game would be Stealth Bird or Wave Motion, less mo- Wave Motion because I know you have True Nade and uh, Dust Tornado. Sure. Now. But I figured yep. Stealth Bird under a lock or something like that might be able to like get under everything. It didn't work out, bro. I thought it might. I you know I give you kudos for trying this, but I feel like it's a bit too late. I feel like once we got Dark Beginning and we got the Dust Tornadoes, I feel like that sort of invalidated the ability to play these types of decks severely, just because before when there was only true nade in the mix that you had to deal with i would have like one shot and maybe like regeki break right but now mm-hmm. you have to deal with true nade and regeki break and dust tornado i feel like there's just so many cards that are generically good enough that we can have in either the main or the side that it's so hard to try to play this and maybe if we played this game like again maybe you would actually be able to establish your floodgates and i wouldn't be able to get through them but it seemed like i always had the out to a floodgate but yeah. if you had a second floodgate in all fairness i had no way to deal with it like on this current board mm-hmm. so uh it, there is a world where this could have actually worked. It would have just, I would have needed more time to possibly find another out. Well, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, maybe it was a bit, it could have even been a set too early too, because another card that I saw on these lists, uh, we haven't hit Flaming Eternity yet, right? No, that no. should be next unless there's a That's what I'm saying. set in between. Yeah, I think maybe I was a little bit too far ahead because there's two cards that I was seeing a lot in these lists, and that is um, a combination of Phoenix Wing Wind Blast to uh, stack on top of your deck, which that card's, I can't wait for us to play with that. That card's great. But um, yeah. also there was Blade Bunny was another card in the next set which is literally Blade it's, rabbit yes Blade rabbit, excuse me but it's literally just dream clown on another yes. card so it's just, I, I mean I, the thing was that i'm looking at it is that i don't think getting to my clowns was the problem it was keeping them around so i don't think it would have made that big of a difference but that was another card that i had to, to see that maybe i could have put in the mix and i just didn't have it of course because we're not there yet yeah and i definitely had plenty of removal to deal with your clown like even if you had something to protect the clown on homunculus coming in i mean you look at my back i had a fisher yeah. in hand ring for the clown torrential for the, anything else you summon bottom was wasn't going to do much, but uh, bottom was just for like your larger stuff. So I had plenty of ways to deal with the clown. So even if it took me time to get to your other stuff, that would have been perfectly fine with me. I mean, I give you kudos though for giving it a try. I think that if there is a opportunity where I wasn't even going to think you were going to try this, it would be this episode. Cause I, I thought after DB1 that that was off the table. Like there's no shot that this is ever coming back. So I, I applaud you trying to one up me in that regard. I, that's what I was saying, man. I said the big thing at the very start of this episode, I said, I said, Alex has been trying to metagame me the whole time what i've been doing i've been just chilling bro chilling with the same deck and i was like what epic why would this be the episode that i change things so i was like i'm gonna do it it's fair fair point oh uh how are your rise of destiny pulls obviously i see you got the thestalos did you get anything else important no uh you were talking about rares man it was funny dude because you want to hear what i didn't get out of my rise of destiny decoichi not a single copy wow. of decoichi dude not a okay. single one what did you what did you miss out on it had to be something else i actually pretty much got what you would expect out of this i got a thestalos but i didn't play it in my deck i had a decoichi but i also didn't play that in my deck because i felt like it didn't really fit with what i was trying to do mm-hmm. i didn't really have any tribute guys in my deck aside from Jinzo in the side. So I feel like Dekoichi is a little bit better when you have something to slam over him afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of want to just have some bigger dudes. But uh, that's really, I pulled the creator, which was cool. And uh, I pulled Perfect Machine King, I guess, which is uh, one of my favorite cards from my childhood. But uh, aside from that, it's Rise of Destiny. Like there isn't really much else to get excited for. Flaming Eternity, though, you already after mentioned, uh, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast is a very big rare that hopefully you're not going to miss out on. Uh, actually, I hope you do miss out on it because I don't want to deal with that card. <laughs> <laughs> we got the reroll tickets, man. I can definitely definitely get one of my collections. Buddy, you're out of reroll tickets. I don't Am know if I? you checked the score. Oh, you I, have I, zero. Zip, nada. You are out. I have one remaining. So... Did we decide three was, three was enough? Did, did we uh, say we three did. was a good... Oh, man, dude. You've had, oh, buddy, you've had all your spins on the wheel. You've had all these chances to get extras. You've even gotten one extra. I, didn't get I don't want to hear it. All right. I don't want to hear it. I didn't realize I was out. Oh, no. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. I hope you enjoyed. As always, let's shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, Tim Zuzer, X3, SJ Winchester, Chaotic Meeple, MBT Play Medolce, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Hoban, Synchro Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asin 05, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic Rockslide, Jordan Coons, Iron Blazer, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Liu, Skyrose, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretch, John Tubase, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Day Sir, Carlos CT, Flannel Daddy, Phoenix the Immortal, Einstein's Theory of MBT's Relative Toes, Hornet, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, Jonah